You want to know what scales and chords are and how they are formed? Want to know the difference between major and minor? Then keep watching, because after this video, you will be able to form major and minor scales and chords in all 12 keys. My name is Martin Cohen, I'm a piano teacher, composer and jazz musician. This video consists of four parts. You can skip to any of the parts by clicking on the time links in the description below this video. This video contains extracts from my online piano course for total beginners. In the description below this video, you will find a link to my piano course. Okay, let's start! The best way to visualize the notes is with a piano keyboard. You see black and white keys. When you look well, you can see a repetitive pattern in the keys on a piano. Each pattern consists of the 12 different notes that we use in Western music. You see that the repetitive pattern I choose goes from the white key just at the left side of a group of two black keys to the white key just at the right side of a group of three black keys. The white key at the left side of the two black keys is called the C. There are six C's on this keyboard. For the note names of the other white keys we go up alphabetically. On the right side of all the C's we have the D's, then the E's, F's and G's. We stop at G, since the name of the next white key is not H, as you would expect. Instead, we start at the beginning of the alphabet, so the next two notes are the A and the B. Now we have named all the white keys. What about the black keys? Look at this black key. It's situated between the C and the D. The pitch of that note is higher than a C, but lower than a D. It's in between the C and the D. We call this note a C-sharp or a D-flat. The sharp sign indicates that it's the note next to the original note, higher in pitch. The flat sign indicates that it's the note next to the original note, but lower in pitch. In the same way, we can name the other black keys. So, this is a D-sharp or E-flat. This is an F-sharp or G-flat. This a G-sharp or A-flat. And this is an A-sharp or B-flat. Ok, before going to the scales, you need to know a few things about some intervals. First of all, an interval is the distance between two different notes. The easiest interval is between two consecutive notes, like for example between C and C sharp, or D flat. This is the smallest interval and is called a half tone interval, or simply half tone. From C sharp, or D flat, to D is also a half tone. You see that between E and F there's no black note, so that means that from E to F is also a half tone. From B to C is also a half tone. A whole tone interval is the same as two half tone intervals added together. So from C to D is a whole tone. From C sharp or D flat to D sharp or E flat is also a whole tone. But also from E to F sharp or G flat. Or from A sharp or B flat to C. The last interval we will see is an octave. An octave is the interval between C and C, or between F and F, or between A flat and A flat, etc. Let's start with the major scales. The easiest scale to begin with is the C major scale. It starts on C and it goes up to the next C an octave higher and consists of only white key notes on the piano. So we start on C and we will just go up playing all the white keys till we reach the next C. So D, E, F, G, A, B and C. The set of notes we just played, so from C to C an octave higher, by playing all the white key notes, is called the scale of C major. We call C the root of the C major scale. Let's look at the intervals between the consecutive notes in the C major scale. From C to D is a whole tone. From D to E again a whole tone. From E to F a half tone. From F to G a whole tone. From G to A a whole tone from A to B again a whole tone, and finally from B to C a half tone. So we have this structure for the intervals between the consecutive notes in the C major scale. One, one, a half, one, 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 a half. Or you could also say whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone. Now, this same structure applies to all the major scales, not only for C major. So we can use this to find all the other major scales with another root note. So let's apply this structure to find, for example, the G major scale. So we start on G, one up to A, 
another one up to B, now a half tone up to C, a whole tone up to D, a whole tone up to E, another whole tone up to F sharp, and finally a half tone to G. So this is the G major scale. You see that the G major scale has one sharp note, the F sharp. The C major scale had no sharps. Let's try one last major scale, the E flat major scale. And again, we will apply the structure 1 1 a half, 1 1 1 a half, now starting on E flat. So there we go. 1 up to F, again 1 up to G, now a half up to A flat, 1 up to B flat, 1 up to C, again 1 up to D, and finally a half up to E flat. And this is the E flat major scale. You see that E flat has three different flat notes E flat, A flat, and B flat. Now you might ask, why did we call those flat notes E flat, A flat, and B flat, and not D sharp, G sharp, and A sharp? This is all explained in my piano lessons for total beginners. You can find a link to my piano course in the description below this video. Now, when you want to find any other major scale starting on a white or a black key, just apply the formula 1 1 a half, 1 1 1 a half. Let's now have a look at the minor scales. Now, to be honest, there is not only one minor scale, but there are three different minor scales. Natural minor, harmonic minor and melodic minor. We will, however, look only at the natural minor scale. The natural minor scale is derived from the major scale. You can see that easily when you realize that, for example, the A minor scale consists of exactly the same notes as the C major scale. It only starts on A instead of on C. So let's have a look at the A minor scale. It starts on A and goes up to the next A and has, like the C major scale, only white key notes. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G and A. From those notes we can now make a minor scale formula. From A to B is a whole tone, B to C a half tone, C to D a whole tone, D to E a whole tone, E to F a half tone, F to G a whole tone and finally G to A a whole tone. So the natural minor scale formula is 1 a half, 1 1 a half, 1 1. Ok, let's apply this formula to find the C minor scale. So we start on the root C, go up one whole tone to D, a half tone to E flat, a whole tone to F, again a whole tone to G, a half tone to A flat, a whole tone to B flat and finally again a whole tone to C. And this is the C natural minor scale. Let's compare the C major scale with the C natural minor scale. You see that three notes are different. The third, sixth and seventh notes are a half tone lower in the natural minor scale compared to the major scale. Let's do one more natural minor scale, that of B flat minor. We start on B flat, go up a whole tone to C, a half tone to D flat, a whole tone to E flat, again a whole tone to F, now we go up a half tone to G flat, a whole tone to A flat and finally a whole tone to B flat. And this is the B flat natural minor scale. And of course, if you want to find any other natural minor scale starting on a white or black key, just apply the natural minor formula. 1 a half, 1 1 a half, 1 1. You can form a chord by playing two or more different notes simultaneously. But in practice, a chord usually consists of three or more notes. In this video, we will only look at chords that consist of exactly three notes. Those chords are the most basic form of major and minor chords. Such a chord with three notes is also often called a triad and consists of the first, third and fifth notes of the major or minor scale. Let's first look at major triads and let's start with the C major triad. Let me begin by displaying again the C major scale. The three notes of the C major triad are the first, third and fifth note of the C major scale. So those are the C, the E and the G. Together 
they sound as follows. The C is called the root of the C major triad. Ok, let's now try to find the G major triad. This is the G major scale. The first, third and fifth notes are G, B and D. They sound together as... And this is the G major triad. Ok, one more. The E flat major triad. The E flat major scale is... And the first, third and fifth notes of the scale are E flat, G and B flat, which form together the E flat major triad. So, in general, when you want to know how to form a major triad, you will first have to know the major scale. And of course, you can simply use the major scale formula 1, 1, a half, 1, 1, 1, a half, to find out the major scale. Then, the only thing you have to do is to pick the first, third and fifth note of the scale and you have the major triad. It's as simple as that. It's time to have a look at minor chords now. Minor triads are formed in exactly the same way as major triads. We only take the minor scale instead of the major scale. So, a minor triad consists of the first, third and fifth notes of a minor scale. We already saw that the A natural minor scale is the easiest minor scale. So let's start to form the A minor triad. Here's the A natural minor scale. The first, third and fifth notes are A, C and E. And here is how it sounds. Okay, the C minor chord now. This is the C minor scale. The first, third and fifth notes are the C, the E flat and the G. And this is how the C minor triad sounds. Let's finish with one more minor chord, B flat minor. The B flat minor scale is and the first, third and fifth notes are B flat, D flat and F. And the B flat minor triad sounds as Now, what's the difference between major and minor chords? First of all, let's listen to the chords to see how they sound differently. This is C major and this is C minor. You can hear that the major chord sounds more happy, whilst the minor chord sounds more sad, more melancholic. Now, what makes the chords sound so differently? Let's have a look at the C major and the C minor triad. You see that only one chord note is different, the middle one. The E in the C major triad is an E flat in the C minor triad, so a half tone lower. That's the only difference. So, the only different note in a major and a minor triad is the third note of the scale. This can help you to quickly find a minor triad when you already know the major triad. Or, the other way around, when you already know the minor triad, you can quickly find the major triad. Just move the third scale note a half tone down or up. For example, we already know the E flat major triad. That's E flat, G and B flat. To find the E flat minor triad, just lower the third note of the scale, the G, by a half tone, it then becomes a G flat. So the E flat minor triad is E flat, G flat and B flat. Or another example, we already know the A minor triad, which is A C and E. To get the A major triad, just raise the C by a half tone to C sharp and you get the A major triad. A, C sharp and E. To have more variety, you can use chord inversions. With chord inversions, you can let one and the same chord sound slightly different. With triads, you can make three variations of the same chord. Let me illustrate this with the C major triad. The C major triad is C, E and G. You see that the C, which is the root of the chord, is at the bottom of the triad. When the C major triad is played in this way, so with the root at the bottom, we call it the C major triad in root position. When you move the bottom note, the C, an octave up, then the E becomes the bottom note. We still have the same triad, C major, since the notes of the triad are still the same, 
Only the bottom note is not a C, but an E. We call this an inversion of the C major triad. This special inversion, with E at the bottom, is called the C major triad in first inversion. It sounds as follows. I can now repeat this process once more. So I move the bottom note, which is now the E, an octave up, to get this chord. This is called the C major triad in second inversion, and sounds as follows. Ok, now I could apply this moving up of the bottom note once more, so put the G at the top. But we're then back in root position, so that means that with a triad you can make three different variations. Ok, you can of course make chord inversions for all major and minor chords. It always works in the same way, just move the bottom note an octave up to the top to get the next inversion. So to finish, let me hear you once more the three different inversions of the C major triad, so that you can hear the difference. Ok, so now you know how to form major and minor chords and scales in all 12 keys. And did you know that with those chords, you can already accompany a whole lot of songs? Now of course there's a lot more to say about chords, about diminished chords, augmented chords, seventh chords, that have more than three notes in the chords. Now, if you're interested in learning more, I have a piano course for total beginners, where you will learn everything about chords and scales, music theory, how to play songs on the piano, how to read music, how to improvise, there's a link in the description below the video. Just have a look. And if you learned a lot in this video, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and eventually leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.